Hello. Akos Society may froze Afrikaans, so ek, me, I'll meet you halfway. I've been I've been speaking English since I was twice. <laughs> so, so uh, is ek vandag se enigste Soti? I think so. Anyway, Steve uh, Steve calls me an Anglo Afrikaner. I speak English, but I have Afrikaans values. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a cartoonist, 16 years, 17 years, I don't know now, I've lost count. I've been, I think I've been fired more times than I've drawn cartoons. I've worked for uh, everybody in the country, and uh, in 2020 I was fired from Report. I was the chief cartoonist at Report, and uh, they fired me because um, I was too offensive. And uh, that's the thing about drawing cartoons, you have to uh, be... Not offensive, but you have to think about the world around you and, and challenge the establishment. That's what I love about this. You know, it's about doing your own thing. The government doesn't want you to do your own thing. And uh, one, of my, one of my values is about independence and thinking critically about things. And although, although drawing cartoons is generally about being very angry, um, there is humor in it. And um, so I've, I've put together just a few cartoons that I've drawn since 2020. I also do a podcast and I host a radio show. And it's all about ideas. It's all about talking, talking about things that matter. What, uh, what, uh, what makes the world go round. And this, uh, if you've seen The Matrix, and they have this, this wonderful metaphor called the blue pill and the red pill. And he holds out... He holds out his hand and he's got a blue pill and a red pill and he says if you take the blue pill you can wake up tomorrow and uh, the world is as you think it is. But if you take the red pill you'll open the curtain and you'll see how the world really is. And what that means is that there's a lot of deception, lies, corruption, fraud. The Zondo Commission is, was the red pill. Before that people would have said, nah there's nothing going on. But we all knew. There was something going on. And that happens in a lot of different things. And that, ap that applies to lots of stuff. The last two, two and a half years have been very strange, haven't they? It's been very weird two and a half years. Lots of weird, mysterious events been going on from COVID to lockdowns to, to uh, um, masks to social distancing to... All kinds of other weird things. And so I thought what I would do is, I'm not going to be too serious, but I just want to tell you a little bit about the way I, I've seen things. One of them is I'll start with, I drew this cartoon where you see uh, it's Adam and Eve. And uh, he says, the snake says, uh, actually the original sin is that you're white. And uh, one, of, one, one of the things that we keep getting told in the media is that if you're white, you're evil. You're a bad person because you're white. You oppress black people. You oppress everything that isn't white. You're a bad person. And that's obviously nonsense. Once you realize that that's all nonsense, you can also do something about it. You can, you can actually enjoy your life if you realize that it's not true. You don't have to bend the knee. You don't have to obey Black Lives Matter propaganda. You don't have to listen to cultural Marxist communist nonsense um, but that only comes when you realize that your skin color doesn't determine how evil or good you are there was a there was a very there was a very racist very racist black man in the 1960s I think he said something about having a dream it was about judging people by the content of their character not the color of their skin. It was very racist. Today you can't say that. You have to judge people by the color of their skin. And uh, speaking of Black Lives Matter, it's okay, it's okay to be white. When you say something like that, it's considered a very racist thing. Although it's okay to say Black Lives Matter, but it's not okay to say it's okay to be white. And I remember there was, a, there was this campaign that happened, I think, in America and I think Europe, where they 
They put little posters. They stuck up little posters around the streets, on the street signs and on the lampposts, and it said, it's okay to be white. And the media went, went berserk. Right, far right-wing extremism is rampant in the cities. It's okay to be white, and they're putting these things down and getting angry. And I saw now, two or three days ago, there was this big sign. Um, I think it's, I, I forget now, I think it was in Portugal. This huge banner on a mountain. And it said, it said white lives matter. And the media just, they don't know how to de deal with this. This is now, this is now brain, brain busting stuff. Like, this is, this is far right extremism. How can they say white lives matter? And you know what's really funny? Is I don't know who's got an iPhone, and I, I don't think you can hear it. I'll see if I can hold it close to my, to my microphone. But if, if, you've, if you've got an iPhone, you can do this yourself. You say, hey Siri, do black lives matter? Oh, okay, the signal doesn't work. Okay, there's no signal. No, she can't get it. But she answers, you can do it yourself. If you, if you say, hey Siri, do, do black lives matter? She'll say, yes, black lives matter. And if you say to Siri, hey Siri, do all lives matter? And she'll say, I'm not, uh, I'm not programmed to deal with politics. <laughs> you can do it yourself. I'm not joking. You can, when you find some signal, ask Siri if white lives matter, if black lives matter, etc. That's the beauty of propaganda. When you, realize, when you realize that there's cultural Marxism that's infiltrating everything. And that's what I'm talking about, the red pill. You can... If you... If you are in that mindset that there's just this blue pill and everything is the way it is and you don't realize that your own phone is pre-programmed to try and indoctrinate you in a, in, a, in a weird kind of way, in a racist kind of way, then you haven't yet swallowed the red pill. The red pill is realizing that there, there are people sitting at Apple and at Google and wherever and they, they're, trying to, they're trying to steer, they're trying to steer the way you think into a particular direction. They want you to feel bad for being white. Public enemy number one, the white Christian family. And you have a mother and a father, two genders, a guy and a girl, right? There aren't 642,000 genders. It's a man and a woman. And without a man and a woman, you can't have kids. And, you, and you're particularly evil if you are white, <laughs> and you're not gay, <laughs> and you're Christian. <laughs> It's the great evil. That, I don't think you can be more evil than that if you're, if you're a white Christian family. And yes, the thing, I'm not making a moral judgment on, on your lifestyle choices, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you can't, have a, you can't have civilization if you don't have a man and a woman, right? That's it. And you can argue and you can get offended and you get upset. It's, it's the truth. That's it. You can't have civilization with two women or two men. So this is why this is considered public enemy number one. And a cartoon like this doesn't get published anywhere. It won't. Report won't publish it. Times won't publish it. Uh, News 24 definitely won't publish it. Also, what happened is when you come out, not as being gay, but as being vaccinated, this was another big new thing. It says, Mom, Dad, I need to come out. I'm not vaccinated. And they're like, oh, OMG, what have I done wrong? Where did I go wrong as a parent? Because that's been the whole big thing over the last two years, is are you vaccinated? It's the most ridiculous concept. For, for my entire life, this wasn't even a thing. I'm, I, I don't know, I got a whole bunch of shots when I was a kid. I don't know what they were. But now suddenly in the last two and a half years, you can't go to places. Can't travel overseas, can't do anything. Can do nothing because of this, this concept of being vaccinated against COVID. And it was, it's utterly absurd. And in my mind, it's, it's understanding that it's about control and it's about trying to manipulate people into a certain direction. We want you to have this injection in you. I've got no idea what's in this injection. I haven't been sick in two and a half years. Why do I need some injection that someone tells me that I must get? Why must I, why must I suddenly listen to Pfizer? So there, I'm coming out. I'm unvaccinated. You know? But speaking of the media, here you have the, the editor at a media house, and he's saying, this news story is partisan, poorly researched, factually untrue, biased, and utter nonsense. It's perfect. We'll publish it. 
And that is precisely how the media has, has gone. They don't really care about what's true. They care about p a propaganda, a particular story, a particular direction. This is also why I'm fired from everywhere, because they don't publish cartoons like this. Because I remember when I, when I submitted a cartoon similar to this to report, and I remember Voldemar phoned me, he's the editor of report, and he said, look, you're attacking our own newspaper. This is, a, this is tricky, because the people inside the office are not quite sure how to deal with this. Like, like, we're paying you money, and you're drawing a cartoon that's attacking us. We're going to publish this, but let's not make a habit of it. <laughs> True story. I got fired in 2020, by the way. Um, I, I've, I think there's only one organization that hasn't fired me in the last 17 years, and that's Afri Forum. Um, and by the way, I no longer work in the mainstream media at all. I only work in the alternative independent space, and I only work with great organizations like Sarkelecha, Solidarity, Afri Forum, Free Market Foundation, anybody who is sort of counter-narrative and is willing to actually challenge the established view. Because that's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be thinking independently, critically. We're not sheep. The last two and a half years, you know, it seriously challenges that idea of who is a sheep and who isn't. The real pandemic, mass media, that's it. There's your, there's your media, there's your pandemic, you know. This is what I've learned in the last two and a half years. I live in Cape Town, I flew up yesterday. I live right, I live right next door to Kailicha. Um, I know that Russ lives in Kailicha North. <laughs> there, was no, no, there was no pandemic. Nobody died, there were no ambulances, there was no with dead bodies piling up in the streets. So what happened? I'll tell you what happened. They didn't have the TV on. They're too busy living their lives. They're not worried about, they're not worried about what Arjun Basson says, you know, from News 24. They're not worried about the hysteria and the alarmism and the sensationalism. And that's the point. The point is, is that the media is designed to sensationalize, to make everything look worse. If you're white, Christian, particularly if you're Afrikaans, you're the enemy. And that is the propaganda narrative. And it's something that you have to take a stand against. And that's where I'm going with the red pill. Because here's the thing. If you, if, you do, if you just take that information and you sit with it, and you do nothing with that information, then you're a loser. The idea is to take that information and do something with it. Fine, you're going to take away Afrikaans from the universities. That's all right. We'll build our own. That's what happened. That's what Solidarity did. It's fine, you can take away Afrikaans from the universities. You can, you, can, you can try and attack our culture, our heritage, our things that we think about, the way we live. That's fine. We'll do our own thing with that, and we'll, and we'll make it work. This is why I love the concept of Aranya. I can't live in Aranya because I'm English, and I'm black, clearly. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm more Pakistani. <laughs> you know what was funny, when, 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 when I met... Uh, when I met my wife's family, her, her, her brother's very first question in the WhatsApp group was, Yeah, I'm say vit. <laughs> um, there's another problem. It's another thing I've realized. Social media. There's a family, a family sitting in the lounge and every single person is on their phone. Nobody's talking. Nobody's talking to one another. Nobody cares about what anybody else says. Like, what's happened? How, how is this, this sort of gemeenskap, this community vibe, how has this fallen apart in the last few years? People walk now, and this is, the, this is the position that people walk in. You know, you can walk in the streets, in the shops, doesn't matter, this is it. The, I, I do that because I'm looking at the, I, what I need to buy that my wife has sent me, I must, this is what I must buy. But generally speaking, this is what people are doing, they're not focused on, they're not in the moment anymore. People are not in the moment, they're not now, they're not in the present. And I think that's also part of the reason why there's so much medication, so much depression, so much anxiety, because people are now thinking about stuff that's no longer meaningful and relevant right now. They're thinking about what's going on in, in, this, in the internet world, in, the, in what's going on in other countries. I mean, why would you want to walk into Levi's to buy jeans, but you're reading a story about what's happening in Ukraine. I mean, that makes no sense. Like, there's a time for that. 
And then you had the president saying, I'm declaring a state of disaster. We all remember that. But he was, he was absolutely right. South Africa is a state of disaster. And it had nothing to do with the virus. It had everything to do with the president. And it had everything to do with the previous president. And it had everything to do with the previous president. And so on. And it had everything to do with the politicians and the government. You know, and the state of disaster was, a, was something that I realized in 2020 that the state of disaster concept comes from above. People like us don't create a disaster. This is innovation. This is friendship. This is building. This is doing something that matters, that's meaningful, that has purpose, that's positive. The government doesn't care about that. The government simply cares about trying to create more rules, extracting more money, ta taxing you, making every, everybody poorer, and then saying, oh, we, we care about you. Which is why you have my fellow South Africans as, as crocodile tears. Because he doesn't really care. He pretends he cares. But then he hides millions of US dollars in his mattress. <laughs> Another thing I learned. There's this whole this weird, this weird thing that happened. Did you notice this weird thing that happened? Suddenly people became... People thought in, from 2020 that sit, sitting down meant that you could avoid a virus. It would go over your head. When you stood up in a restaurant, you must put on your mask. Remember this. You could sit down and you could take it off. Because viruses fly over your head. And I remember looking around thinking, what the heck is going on? How are people this stupid? Like, how do, how, do, how do we arrive at this place where, where people are so stupid? And then I realized that it's not about being stupid either. It's about being propagandized. And this is what the media does really well. It's what the government does really well. They hit you from all angles. And eventually, you don't know what to think anymore. You get confused. And you sit down thinking that you can avoid a virus. You've got the president saying, we must follow the science. And then the science is really just a badly colored in picture of bunnies and rainbows and all sorts of nonsense. Because follow the science is just a metaphor. It doesn't mean anything. When the president said, and, and we, we kept hearing this, we must follow the science. Alan Windy in Cape Town said this as well, we must follow the science. What it really means is you must listen to us. That's what it means. It doesn't mean follow the science. Nobody knows what the science is. Scientists were being silenced. They were being told to keep quiet. Because what, what follow the science means is follow authority. When I, when I drove in here with my father-in-law, there was a sign that said, Sakhle could do your own thing. I think it was right. That do your own thing. I think that's right, hey? Do, doing, doing your own thing. Have I got it right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Th that's not listening to authority. It's doing your own thing. And your authority gets created from doing your own thing. Your local authorities. And once you have enough of these local authorities, you have competing authorities doing their own thing. And, that's, and that is how you actually progress. You don't progress with, with, a central, with a central authority saying, follow the science or trust, trust the science. Don't you love it in the media? Experts say. Have you thought about this? Have you, have you thought about what the experts have said in the last two and a half years? In the, in the Irish Times, if you live under a certain flight, airplane flight path, you're likely to get COVID, right? Over a certain flight path. BBC says changing of daylight savings times in Europe will give you a heart attack. Cold showers will give you a heart attack. Gardening will give you a heart attack. Making your bed will give you a heart attack. It just goes on and on and on. Now, these are all legit articles. I have all of them. And that's how ridiculous it is. And that's the media just pushing, pushing, pushing. And which is why if you if you're in that blue pill that blue pill mindset you'll listen to this and go well they know what they're talking about they have our best interests at heart well sweetheart they don't have your best interests at heart because they're making money and they're trying to steer you into a certain direction that's the red pill i'm coming to the other there's a, there's a few pills there's a few different colors we're getting there we're getting to the white pill so yeah we got this guy saying i'm here for my shot and then he gets shot Anyway, I, I don't really know why this slide's here, but... <laughs> All right, here we go. So here we got, and here we're talking about media again, so I'll read this to you. So uh, he's reading his iPad, and he's reading headlines, and this is what I was just talking about with the ridiculous headlines. 
These are all real headlines. Adults suddenly dying. This is the new thing in the last two and a half years. Adults are just suddenly randomly dying. Perfectly healthy people are just dying for no reason whatsoever. Nobody knows why. Just randomly dying. Next one. Healthy people are dropping dead. There we go. That's another one. Watching television kills people. This was in the BBC. Watching television, it doesn't kill people. It just makes you stupid. Gardening is deadly. That was the other beautiful one. Like gardening gives you heart attacks. Sex. Having sex is a killer. What? <laughs> Making your bed is deadly. That was another great one. Uh, you are a biohazard. That was another one. You are. Remember, this is why you needed to isolate. You had to stand far away from people. Stand two meters away because remember, viruses can calculate distances also. So two meters, and then it changed, like 1.5, depending on where you were. You know, perfectly healthy people are biohazard. I remember I was, I was when I flew up uh, to Joburg last year. I was at Orotambo. No, I was flying back to Cape Town. I beg your pardon. I was at Orotambo and. Uh, boarding the plane and um, there were two, uh, two customs, security, whatever. You know, you, now they, they can't touch anything. You, you have to do everything yourself. So, so I scanned my phone on that little thing with the, the QR code and then we had our, our masks on because they had those people walking around in the airport with these signs saying, please wear your mask, you know, everywhere, like, like zombies. And, um, and so I had a mask on because in the airport is not one of those places you can win this, this sort of fight. And I just wanted to get home. And uh, the security guy said to me, can I see your ID? So I gave him my ID and he said, can you pull down your mask? Because I want to see if the photo is the same. And I said, no, I'm not pulling down my mask. He said, he said, why not? I said, I don't want to kill you. I don't want to make you sick. <laughs> and he looked at me like this and he went, Nah. <laughs> As it turns out, I didn't pull my mask down, and he said, you can just go through. The best part is getting inside the airplane, as some of you might know, you've flown in the last two and a half years. You get inside the airplane, and the announcement comes through saying, please, please socially distance. Like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> like, how does this work? <laughs> I'm sitting like this, standing like this, I'm trying to put my luggage in, and then they make it even more, more complicated, and the aerostess says, I, I, can't, I can't help you with the luggage. You, I'm not allowed to touch your, 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 your bag. Okay, you must do it yourself. So like, you, everything is now self-service. So on the left-hand side, it says, then. I'm going to teach you about the birds and the bees. And then the kid, on the right-hand side, it says, now, and, and, and his phone. His phone is saying, I'm going to propagandize you about transhumanism. Now, that's a very complicated phrase. Let me explain it. Transhumanism, essentially, is the idea that... Uh, technology and humans are merging uh, for example 20 years ago you could you could go somewhere without your phone today you you can't you feel lost you feel empty like what do i do now if i leave my phone at home i'm like i don't know what to do i need google maps or something everything's everything's on your phone and so it's become part of us so the idea the, the, the word transhumanism simply means that we are becoming more and more reliant on technology that it's becoming part of us um, and whether or not it's a good or bad thing, I don't know. It's just a thing. I don't know. I don't know how you oppose that. So, the, but the point of the cartoon is that when I was a kid, I had my parents telling me about the birds and the bees. And what, what I worry about is that the future generations are not going to have their parents doing that because you've got too many single single parent homes. The destruction of the family is part of the sort of cultural Marxist zeitgeist. Everything is about the destruction. The Communist Manifesto is about destroying the family unit. So in the media today, single moms are celebrated, working moms are celebrated. I can't say that one too loudly, but you know what I mean. The idea is, is that everything is about destroying the nucleus. It's about taking away what is wholesome, what is working, and, and, and breaking it apart into this hyper-individualized, atomized, ultra-liberal disaster that's going to end up with kids getting all the information from their cell phone from Siri, from Siri, who's been programmed to give a particular um, narrative. That's what people, that's where we're heading and that's what people need to understand, is that 
if we outsource our thinking, if we outsource our health, if we outsource our critical thinking capabilities, we're going to end up with a world full of zombies, full of people who don't question anything, people who blindly follow, people who think that the central, central authority means something and, and that the central authority cares for us. The central authority, like the government, doesn't care. You need organizations like AfriForum. You need organizations like Solidarity to build universities. You need Sakhalika. You need the Free Market Foundation, and so on and so on. You need these competing decentralized interests that create their own structures of authority. Remember this, trust the science, that's what I said earlier. And on the right hand side, this is my favorite. Our fact checkers have determined that there is no evidence of brainwashing. Fact checkers, they're the telemarketers of the internet, nobody cares about them. If something, you know, everybody's been on Facebook and they saw that little message that pops up underneath anything. Like it'll say, you know, click here for, for, for COVID information, right? But this, it's changed now. I, I, I'll dare you, I, dare, I double dare you, go onto Facebook and type something about the weather. Anything about the weather, the sun, clouds, climate change. A new message is, is going to pop up saying, click here for information on climate change or weather in your area or something. That's the new one. This is the fact checking. And the point of that is it's to propagandize you, it's to steer your thinking into a particular direction. And it's to stop you from asking questions that matter. Like, are we are we affecting the climate? That's what Facebook is now wanting you to not think about. And how do you fight back? So you have a, a black sheep saying, I'm going to start with you. And it's a whole bunch of white sheep. And how you fight back by thinking, not in terms of the collective, but in terms of the individual. Start with people around you. You have to talk to people around you one by one. You look at... You look at situations not in this massive, in this massive un, unachievable, unapproachable way. That's the black pole. The black pole now, there's, there's the third pole. The black pole is when you look at everything and you go, it's too big. There are too many people wearing masks. There are too many people who think that I'm making earth hotter. There are too many people who think that I'm evil because I'm white. There's nothing I can do. I'm just going to give up on, on, on this. That's a nihilistic, dark depressing place to be, it's a bad place to be, nobody should be there. What matters is the white pull, and that's the final pull. And that is when you take that information and you do something with it. You build a university. You say, no, I'm not a bad person because of my skin color. I'm not a bad person because I'm a, a male. I'm not a bad person because I'm a Christian. That's the white pull. It's, it's saying, no. And it's having the institutional backing also to, to be able to say that. This is why communities matter. This is why having like-minded people matter. This is why networks, networks matter. Um, no, that slide shouldn't be this. I'll skip that one. But that's just saying that there are global, global powers, centralized structures trying to cause people to fight, um, to fight amongst ourselves. But we'll skip that one. Yeah, we have searching for truth through the fog. Top of the top of the cartoon is a cross. Obviously, it's coming from a Christian perspective. But the point is, is that searching for truth is exactly learning to navigate that fog of information wars, the fog of propaganda, the fog of fake news. And it, it is it is about getting to. It is, it is about, it is about, yeah, exactly. It's about empowering yourself and empowering your communities and those around you. And I think this is the last one. Yes, this is the last one. So there we go. It's a quote from C.S. Lewis. He says, when the whole world is running towards a cliff, he was running in the opposite direction, appears to have lost his mind. And that was C.S. Lewis. And uh, in, in the cartoon itself, you see a whole bunch of sheep running off the cliff. And you see a black sheep running the other direction. My point is this. I think that it's a great place to be to, to be white-pilled in the sense that you want to do something with information um, and, and, and win. But that requires, in order to do that, you've got to be the black sheep. That's, that's the point of my conversation. And thank you for listening.